Welcome back to the second channel guys, it is me, 8744 Extra, and today we'll be ranking with you guys the Total Drama Antagonist. So, we're going to be ranking all the antagonists, and we're going to be ranking them from worst to best. We're going to obviously start from worst, and we'll build our way from the best, okay? And there will be spoilers, so if you have not watched any of the Total Drama seasons, or if you have not watched all the seasons, please feel free to, please feel free to watch, because I will be spoiling pretty much the entire thing. So, please do not watch this video if you haven't watched um, Total Drama. Anyways, enough introductions, let's go on with the video. So, I'm going to already tell you guys which characters I'm not going to be ranking. So, I am not going to be ranking Max and Blainly. Even though they are in consideration, I don't think they're antagonistic enough. And so, I'm not going to be ranking those two characters. Everyone else is fair game. Fair game. Even Chris, you can argue, shouldn't really be here, but... Yeah. You know what? I think we should allow Chris. I think we'll make an exception with Chris because he is he's part of every season. So, you know, I'll make an exception with Chris, but no no Max and no Blainly. Starting with last place I have, it is Mal. Mal, for me, was really bad in time. I significantly hated him so much. And what made him so annoying was the fact that he was just being evil for the sake of being evil. There was no motivation I never really understood why he did those kind of things. Because there's one thing you could be bad, obviously. There there has to be some justification, though. And there was no justification whatsoever. And it just was idiotic. The ending as well, the whole button thing. It's a disgrace of an antagonist. Horrendous antagonist. One of the worst antagonists I've seen in cartoons ever in my life. And probably in movies as well. Okay, now next is really tricky. I am going to go with Scott. Um, for me, I particularly did not like Scott. Now, I will say Scott is slightly better than Mike. I mean, sorry, Mal. But, um, Scott I just didn't like. I didn't like him as, as an antagonist. I thought he was just being really stupid, you know, intentionally trying to lose the challenge for his team. You know, like, I, I just never really understood why it just didn't really make sense to me. Like, why would you try to lose on purpose? Like, it just never occurred to me as a very smart idea. You know, it gave you a false sense of security. Like, I don't know. I just I just thought it was really such a risky idea. And obviously, with the way the show was intended, he was obviously going to survive. You know, it was just so obvious. Plot armor as well. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I, I got to say, he's one of the worst. Next up, I have, it is um Scarlet. I think Scarlet, for me, was not that great of an antagonist. Now, I'm not going to put her in the worst category, where I put Mike and Sma uh, Mal, uh, sorry, Scott and Mal, but I do think she's a tier above it, so I'll say below average. Um, and the grand scheme of things, she she just wasn't really that cunning and antagonistic enough, and she was only really an antagonist for like one episode of Pocket Two Island, which was a breakout episode, of course, in episode ten. So, yeah, not really too much to elaborate upon there. She wasn't really evil throughout the thing, so yeah, no, I don't really have much more to say. So I'll say below average, I guess, is probably the right way to say it. Okay, next I have it is, I'm going to go with Chris, Chris McLean. Now, with Chris in particular, um, I thought he was great. I think the first three seasons he did a great job as a host. I feels weird to even put him in this thing, but I guess we can put, I guess he is an antagonist after all. Um, it's just that after a world tour, I just thought he was terrible, especially All-Stars on Pocket 2 Island. That was just crazy. Even Revenge was also bad too, but it wasn't as bad as... You know, All Stars on Pocket Two Island. He was just not a good host whatsoever. It was way too anti antagonistic, and I just felt like he wasn't great. It just wasn't great, and um, yeah, it just wasn't good. Okay, now that we've got the really, really bad antagonists out of the way, now it is time to discuss about characters that are average, good, and very good. So we're gonna start with who do I put next? Um, I believe I'm gonna put. Sugar next. Now, Sugar is a very weird omission uh, entry to explain because I feel as though Sugar isn't really a bad antagonist, but not really a good antagonist either. And let me explain myself. The reason why I don't think she's a good antagonist is because of the fact that she wasn't really an antagonistic enough to everyone. She was only really an antagonist to a few characters, like Sky, Ella, and Jasmine. Maybe partially to Dave to some extent. That's my problem with her is that she's only really relevant for those particular characters. Whereas everyone else, she's just neutral or she just doesn't care, you know? 
Now, I don't think she's a bad antagonist because I actually I actually do think she made things interesting. You know, um, she was competitive. She was definitely someone that you just didn't want to be with. She was unlikable. You know, what's what, what's kind of important with an antagonist is someone to that is unlikable and it completely opposes the protagonist of Sky. So I do like her conflict with Sky, and I do think that was a really healthy, good conflict, and I think it was good and necessary. It's just that my problem is I can't really rank her a b much higher because of the fact that she's just not a very good antagonist at, at all. Like, she's just, like, mediocre at best. So while she is better than, you know, Chris, Scarlet, and Scott and Mal, she's not really that great an antagonist compared to, like, Alejandro Heather, you know? She's just not, you know, not really any brilliant ideas and strategies so yeah for me i'm putting her in the middle next up i have it is um justin uh, justin for me is also someone that's also close to middle as well he, he's kind of a it's kind of similar to um to sugar in the sense that he's not really that antagonistic you know he was there for the first half of the season as an antagonist you know to basically oppose izzy but you know similar to basically what i said with sugar is that he didn't really have there isn't really a huge conflict. The only real huge conflict was him and Izzy. You know, he always got um, Lindsay and Beth to be in his side. And I guess you could say in some ways he had a big, big part in the whole breakup thing with Gwen and Trent. So you could actually argue that. I just remember that now. Um, So he had a little bit more contribution than Sugar. But need needless to say, I thought he was pretty average. I thought he was pretty, pretty average. Okay, now we move on to our top five. And this is where things are very, very interesting, guys. And this is where... I'm going to say some interesting stuff. Okay. I'm going to put Jazz, Jacquees, and Jose combined together. The Redonkis race. So we'll, we'll put them as one entry when there's two different people. Okay. I know that. So we'll combine them together. So fourth place. Um, This is difficult, guys. Difficult, difficult. I believe I made my mind. And it's, let me just tell you this right now, it's basically between two people. It's between Courtney and Joe Keys slash Jose. Alejandro, Heather are the best two. Let me just say this right now. So it's coming down who's going to be fourth and third. I think I made my decision. I am going to go with Courtney fourth. This was a close call, a very close call, but I decided to go with Courtney as fourth. And the reason why I went with Courtney is that um, I, I, I liked her as a tiger, so I think she was a good antagonist. I think really good is a bit of a stretch. I wouldn't put her as really good, though. I thought, yeah, actually, you know what? I might put her as really good. But, yeah, the thing with Courtney is that she was a great antagonist. She made total drama action to what it was, you know, made it more interesting. Because let's be real, guys. Up until that point, it was pretty boring. It was, you know, the whole Gwen and Trent drama was, you know, pretty boring. Then you had the whole, like, you know, it was just, like, so boring. There was nothing really memorable from that. And she made it far more interesting. She got, like, unfair advantages. She had the... You know, her um, PDA, she had the relationship with Duncan, she had a conflict with Beth and Lindsay. She just made the whole action just memorable, like so just a half a season, just changed the entire season and a whole, you know. And I just feel like for me, she was just a great, impactful character, powerful character, and that kind of thing. My only criticism of Courtney is that I feel like she got a bit too hot-tempered, and I feel like she just didn't try too much to be a nice person. You know, like with Heather and Alejandro, and maybe to some extent with Jacquees and Jose, I feel like she never really tried to, you know, be different. I feel like she never really tried her social game, and that's where I kind of felt like it literally lacked compared to the other three, and that's why I have her fourth. But nonetheless, she was pretty good antagonist, and I did enjoy her company, of course. Third, I already mentioned this before, is Jacquees and Jose. For me, these two were amazing. My favorite characters, probably the Rodonkis race. I love these two characters. These two characters made it very interesting they always kept cheating they always try to keep finding advantages they always try to like uh ruin other people's like you know try to uh, screw over other people's like work and you know it was just crazy i just love their conflict with the police cadets like their conflict with the police cadets was amazing that that's what made the raucous race so special is that the two and them just despise each other so much and it's crazy that um the two are just so intelligent like they they tried everything they could to win and they kept fighting persisting they they did everything they could to try to win, and they nearly made it all the way, man. Got third in the end, which is pretty commendable. So, you know, I just think that, for me, they did an excellent job. And, yeah, I just thought they were amazing, and I really love them as a pair. I think they were a great pair. I really, really like how cunning Jose is, how much desperate she is. Don't go on, is also do too, but I feel like Jose just had that more emphasis, had that more 
energy, you know, and I, I don't know. I, I just feel like she was such a really good antagonist. The reason why I have her above Courtney is just because of the fact that I feel like her, like, the fact that she did an entire season with the two was amazing. And I feel like the issue with Courtney is that as good as it was, it was only a half a season. You know, that's kind of the problem with Courtney is that, you know, she didn't have a full season to express herself. So, you know, that's kind of the only down, that's another downside I should have mentioned earlier. Now it's between second and first. And this is very difficult. <laughs> very, very difficult, guys. But for me, I have made my mind. This might come as an unpopular opinion. But I'm going to go with Heather as second place. Now, I respect Heather. I think Heather, for me, is one of the best Italians ever. I, I think what she did was incredible. Like I have to re put some massive respect on her. Because, obviously, she's the reason why Children Island is what it is. You know, She made it to the final three. She, she had the girls' alliance in her favor. She manipulated people. She got people to do her things. She was just about as brilliant as you can get. My only criticism with her, kind of similar to what I said with Courtney, is that I feel like her social game was very lacking. And I think that's one of the biggest criticism I have with her is that she didn't really have a proper social game, which is why Alejandro for me is number one, because Alejandro was really... Wait, what am I doing? Um, let me put that... There you go. I wanted to put Alejandro there first. First... Yeah, Alejandro Freeman was amazing. As an antagonist, I thought he was brilliant. The way he was able to trick all those girls, uh, well, most of those girls, and even did almost all the guys too, which is incredible, because a lot of people talk about what he did with the girls in particular, but what he did with the guys was very commendable. Like, he pretty much eliminated almost every single male character from the series, except for Ezekiel, which I think is crazy, that he pretty much caused most eliminations. He was hated by many people. And it's crazy that even when um, even when he's actually a protagonist in All Stars to some extent, people don't want to believe him because of what he did in the previous seasons. Like people never wanted to take his side; they're even willing to take Heather's side over him, which shows how much more hatred Alejandra had compared to Heather, and that Heather actually changed, you know, whereas Alejandra really didn't. So yeah, that that for me is my rankings, man, of the uh, the total drama antagonist guys. Like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, but let me know what you guys think in the comment section below of your antagonist rankings. Would you guys do this? So let's go ahead and quickly summarize this. So I have Alejandro first. I have Heather second. I have Jaquiz and Jose third. Courtney fourth. Fifth, Justin. Sixth, Sugar. Seventh, Chris. Eighth, Scarlett. Ninth, Scott. And tenth, Mike. So, and like I said, I'm not going to rank Max and Blamely because let, let's be real. They weren't really antagonist. You know, they, they really weren't. So... Anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy. Uh, let me know what you guys think in your comment section below. If you guys made this far, please consider hitting the like button and hit the subscribe button as, we, as we're trying to hit 100 subscribers, guys. 100 subscribers by the end of the year, hopefully. So, yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out, man. Peace out.